Good morning, everybody. Everybody doing good? What is Blessings it? to you. This is good news for you. Gospel track. I don't want any of that stuff. You don't want any of that stuff? No, I'm an atheist. You are? Yeah. Well, the Bible says only a fool says there's no God. That's it. All right. At least you're honest. Yeah. I'd, ra I'd rather you say you're an atheist than profess to be a Christian but live like a like a heathen, and that's what America's full of. All right, man. Full of. Full of. Are you filming the thing? I'm then? filming everybody here, sir. Yes, sir. Why are you filming? Uh, to protect me from false accusations. Somebody might say I'm preaching a false gospel. They're actually filming us too, as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Well, my name is Chaplain Bill with IPOC Ministries. In your hand, you hold the very word of God. The gospel, in a nutshell, in that. 1800 word gospel track that you hold which has the bad news and the good news you know the bible warns that many false prophets will come today matter of fact the bible teaches that god no longer speaks to us through prophets it says in hebrews chapter 1 beginning with verse 1 that god speaks to us now through his son jesus christ he no longer speaks to us through signs and wonders. He no longer speaks to us through prophets, but He speaks to us through His Son, Jesus Christ, and His powerful Word. And the Bible says here in Hebrews 1, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in the time past to the fathers by the prophets, that's how He used to speak to us, through the prophets, but now in verse 2, has in these last days, or this current time, spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things. Through Him also He made the worlds, that Christ even created the worlds, who being the brightness of His glory, and the express, express image of His Son, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by himself purged our sins, that's talking about Christians, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better, so much better than the angels, and he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. In this passage right here, it says that God spoke to prophets in the past time, but now he speaks to us through his son, David we was his number one prophet. He wears the cross right there on his robe. Yeah, that, that man has some issues. You know, the Bible says, speaking of God's word, that the preaching of Christ will be is foolishness to those that are perishing. And the way, reason why this man is acting the way he is is because he's perishing in his sins. And I'm not going to stop preaching, no matter what he does talks about Christ's brightness of His glory, His majesty, His supremacy, the preeminence of Christ, that in all things, all things consist through Jesus Christ. And that now, right now, it says that He purged the sins of our sins. Who's the word our here? I'm a little distracted. The our here is the church, the blood-bought, repented bride of Christ, that Christ purge the sins of his church not for everybody he didn't purge the sins of everybody in this line he purged the sins of those that would repent and believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and it says that he sat down at the right hand of the majesty <coughs> Christ after he came to this world through the virgin birth conceived of the Holy Spirit he went to that cross and he died of a brutal death where he purged the sins of his blood-bought church and then when he was buried on the third day he bodily rose from the grave that is when he forever defeated death and conquered sin and then he ascended into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the majesty on high thus says the Word of God that right now ladies and gentlemen on this Tuesday Jesus Christ the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man, is equal with the Father. And the Bible says that if we repent and believe in that Christ, repent and put your trust in Christ alone for salvation, you will be saved. And you ask, what do you need to be saved from? My friends, we need to be saved from our sins. 
We need to be saved from the wrath of God so that she can experience the love of God through the sonship and lordship of His Son, Jesus Christ. You say, well, what is a sin? A sin is a transgression against God's law which you hold in your very hand. Thou shalt not have any gods before me. Thou shalt not lie. Have you ever lied? Of course we have. We're liars by nature. Thou shalt not have any uh, idols bowed down before a carbon image. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What Jesus said in Matthew 5, I tell you that if you've ever looked at a woman to lust for her, you are an adulterer at your heart. Because God is just and holy, my friends, He will not allow sin to go unpunished. I deserve to be thrown into the depths of hell to be under the wrath of a holy, just, furious God. But by the grace of God, on November 14, 1991, He saved a wretch like me. I'm going to heaven not because of anything that this knucklehead did. I'm going to heaven only because of what Christ accomplished on that cross. So ladies and gentlemen, would you repent and believe in that message, in that Christ? If anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer them or I'll pray for you. Anybody? Do I have any water? I, I'm sorry about that. I don't have any water. Matter of fact, it's time to go get some water. I'm sorry, sir. Believe it or not, I used to bring a big case of bottled water. I used to give water out here uh, when it was like 110, 115 last year. It was about already 102 at this time of the morning. I used to hand water out, and I haven't been doing that. I'm sorry. But they'll give you some water in there. All right, folks. I'll be here for a while. If anybody wants any prayer, conversation, staying cool, huh? Good.